see what I'll do. I'll, I'll mute it for a second. And now we're not muted. I think the Downton PBS one gets more attention. At least, well, 
when they just use the Downton Abbey. Let's go to ready to start. Absolutely. Okay. You gonna start or am I gonna start? You are. Okay. I kind of always forget how it goes. Hi everyone and welcome to the latest episode of Picture Shows and Petticoats. I am Elizabeth from ElizabethMichelle.com. And I'm Jennifer from InWhichIBlog.com. And we are here to talk about one of our most favorite things, Downton Abbey. Because it returned. Three. Yay! And we have our tea. I hope that you will join us and you've got your tea prepared. I'm drinking black tea today, Earl Grey. Uh -huh. I'm drinking some kind of kombucha green tea thing. She's drinking beer tea. It's not beer tea. <laughs> it's fermented. I, I used the word fermented to Jennifer, and so now... That was an interesting conversation. But anyway, um, yeah, so we're here to talk about the latest episode of Downton Abbey that we got to see here in the U.S., Season three is here now. And we're behind the curve. Yes, we're behind, and we didn't watch we didn't illegally watch. on the internet like some people I know. So don't spoil it for us. Yeah. Um. So, you want to talk about just like your initial reaction to the overall episode? Two episodes, I guess, because I think we got two, the first two episodes of the series. Mm -hmm. I thought it was good. Mm hmm um, I I was a little disappointed though, cause I I was really hoping for more wedding, mm -hmm. more honeymoon, more build up. I almost didn't really even expect the wedding to happen in the first episode. I know. I, I kind of expected it to take a little bit longer. Yeah, I was kind of shocked too. And then it just it didn't last very long. But then I was kind of okay because you know all weddings are pretty much the same. So right. yeah. With the second episode, they started building up more things to look forward to. Mm -hmm. some, some interesting storylines to look forward to. Along that line, I had a friend tell me that I would start noticing, at least she thought, some recycled storylines she felt in this series. Mm -hmm. And I know we're only two in, but I'm already kind of seeing some similar stuff. Not exactly the same, but like with with Isabel, and I'm really mm -hmm. jumping ahead just in the mm -hmm. middle of it. Um, but I feel like it's kind of cliche with her now. It's like, what's her next cause? Oh, guess what I'm doing now? I'm kind of over it. That's true. I liked it better when, where was she off to? When she was in France. France. Maybe we can send her back to France. Or why doesn't she just stay put and... A person for a while. I don't know. Always has to have a cause. But anyway, I'll be interested to see if what my dear friend Ollie says is going to come true. Because you know, I mean, she could be having grandkids at any moment now. So mm. now that she doesn't seem like the grandmother type. She's, she's in the first season. Yeah, but she's different. She's all like, <coughs> excuse me. Jennifer's had the flu. Sorry. So I'm risking my life sitting <laughs> next to her. Um, uh, you know what? She's changed a lot, I think. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Like you said, you mentioned earlier about maybe the writers didn't watch the last two episodes of the last series. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm, I'm denying. I'm claiming plausible deniability. Well, I don't know. I There was something it didn't... I don't know if there was... It was because there was time in between, like such a... I don't know. How much time do you think passed between... I mean, we could know this for That's sure. That's what I was going to ask you. I was, uh, 
I should start looking this up. I think this is my question every single time. It's how much time is that? We could always pause the live and go back and watch the last picture shows and put a coach episode. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I won't do that to you. Um, yeah, so it starts off with wedding preparations. Mm -hmm. um, looks like they're really putting on a big show. Yes. I love that the town was getting all I know, out. and how she was in the carriage, and they all came out and cheered. Oh, I thought that was great. Everybody else drove in motor cars, but she is in the carriage, just like the princess. It's like a royal wedding. I guess it kind of is. It is. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. That was nice. We have some other stuff happening as well with Edith. And Sir Anthony Strong. Mm -hmm. Yes. We had that big cliffhanger moment at the end of the last season mm -hmm. where we kind of have our fingers crossed that maybe she'll talk him into it. Or maybe not. I've, I've grown to like her more than I did. You know, I always felt bad for her. Mm -hmm. And I thought she was mean, especially series one. You know, really wicked. Um... <laughs> Um, but I like her. I like her now, and I think I want that to work out for her. And I didn't buy into the whole sappy, all the guys I knew were dead, blah, blah, blah. I didn't Really? I didn't buy kind of all that. the guys she knows are dead. It's like, that's not really a reason to get married as far as I'm concerned. No, sure, but, but so like, I think it was her argument for seeing an older man. Like, there's not... That makes me feel bad for him, though, too. It's just like... Okay, so I thought she liked him, but now it's just there's nobody else, so I have to because I'm poor little me. It was different for a woman then. You know, you had to think about. Except for wealthy women. And they but are she's wealthy. the middle sister. She would be the one they hid up in the attic. <laughs> she would get to go off to Newport to live with Martha. Is Ooh. It Martha Levinson. Yeah, that's what I would do. Yes. In Newport, yeah. She didn't know anything to worry about. Okay, can we talk about how they treat <laughs> the Americans in this? Like how, Demer how Americans are depicted to everybody? You go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if we feel the same way about it. We probably do. Okay, I have a problem with how the American maid is... Uh, a tart. A tart. She's, she's loose, and it's clearly because she's American, and her forward-thinking American really? ways make her be all over the... Yeah, absolutely. The bean pole. What was it that she called him? What you know? Oh, uh, what's his name? Alfred, the one on stilts. The one on stilts. Oh, Brian's nephew. Yeah, yeah. Her name is Sarah. I didn't know that. Oh, Brian. Sarah uh huh. I was looking at the IMDb page, and she's listed as Sarah. Uh huh. So anyway, um, no, I didn't like that. And I don't know how I like Grandmother Levinson. Yeah. Yeah. She's got a lot of opinions. I'm sure we didn't expect that, though. They cast Shirley MacLaine. Surely the character's not going to have any opinion. No, not whatsoever. At all. Just joking. <sighs> yeah. I felt like her opinions about American British relationships weren't necessarily. Well grounded, but I also feel like her character in general, being as wealthy as she is, she's not necessarily a very grounded woman anyway. <laughs> well, and I thought it was kind of odd her attitude, especially since she was okay with her daughter going right. to marry him. Yeah. And maybe we'll see some of that in the proposed prequel to Downton. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe, but maybe she sees that as them having power over the Crawleys, because the Crawleys couldn't have survived without her money in the first place. Um, or maybe she feels like because they're titled, they feel like they're better than her. Um, maybe she's trying to... Maybe. And I know for some people that is like an American thing to like show that, you know, you made something of yourself and you're not, you weren't old money or something, because that is kind of at the time when new money is becoming okay in right. society. So. <sighs> yeah. I don't know, but um, Cora, okay, so speaking of that family, um, 
I found Cora really annoying. Both both these episodes, I thought she was just absolutely terrible. And the most annoying thing to me, and this was just a small little nitpicky thing, whenever uh, Tom and Sybil come back, yes. I'm going to start calling him Tom now, so Branson, um, she, I don't know if I can even do it, she's like, hello Tom. And she addresses everybody like this. This episode, her head is like looking to the ground, and her eyes are up like this, and it's really weird. And it makes her, it gives her a very strange kind of ominous look. Like, <laughs> isn't that weirding you out? If I like got to you like that on the side, yes, that's so yeah. Uh huh. Okay, and then it doesn't help that she's got this angular hairstyle going on that makes her head look like it goes to here. Sorry, we'll rant. <laughs> Well, it was almost kind of like the war never happened. I mean, all of the things that we learned at Downton Abbey as far as opening up our lives mm -hmm. to the world and how things have changed so much. Oh, well, yes. It's, it's, so that was, that was part of what led me to the comment about I, it was almost like the last two episodes of the previous season never really happened. Or, mm -hmm. um, I can see that. I just feel it was the character carryover was wasn't as there as strong as I would have expected yeah. it to be. Mm. But Tibble, Tom and Sybil. <laughs> is that what you're going to call them? <laughs> they or is that going to be known? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I, he irritates me and annoys me even more than he ever did before. I just Because he can't keep his mouth shut about politics at the dinner table? If I hadn't been mm. not feeling good, there would have been things thrown at my TV because I was just, ugh. My coffee. He, he wears me out. Does he? But, yes. But I, it was, um, I think the best moment of the whole first episode for me was when the Dowager sat him down and dealt with him. I was like, yes, and that is exactly what take off happened coat. to begin with. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was, that was nice. Yeah. I didn't Larry. like that Larry fellow. Larry. The Larry. guy that put something in the string. Oh. Wow, he's a worm. And he looked like. Never mind. I'm not. I'm gonna stop criticizing people's looks. Maybe he and Thomas were related. Maybe. Okay. So, and then Thomas. Okay. So, am I skipping ahead? Thomas, ah, go ahead. Let's go with the Thomas is a servant again. Now, I, I mean, we do remember that mm -hmm. he put everything he had into his little black market scheme, and it went belly up. But here he is. <laughs> A servant again, downstairs again, and he's at odds with O'Brien. I was wondering maybe he's feeling like he's better than she is because he got to be a acting sergeant or whatever he was. But not only is he a servant again, but he's a valet, which is what he was trying to kill Bates for mm -hmm. to begin with. Yeah. So, so he has kind of moved up in that way as far as being downstairs. Um, I don't know, maybe he feels a little bit jealous, you know, she's bringing her nephew in under her wing there, and she's kind of his mama a little bit. Partner in crime. I, I know, it's really a very dysfunctional relationship. I don't understand The them. axis of evil. God. I doubt in Abby. Abby. I did appreciate, sorry, I'm jumping back, uh, Sir Anthony standing up for... Tom at the dinner table. He's a good guy. I love him. Um, Edith's new hair is good. You know, she had I a little like bit hair. different something. Sybil looks horrid, but kudos to the makeup and costuming departments because she looks exactly how she should look. Well, and she has, I think it's to show that she's got a more simple hairstyle. She doesn't have somebody doing her hair all the time for her. She's Mrs. Branson now. I'm sorry. That's I still have trouble with that. What? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Branson? Mm -hmm. He's a good man. He's a good man. No, he's not a good man. I don't know. He's an immature punk. Well, he has beliefs that... Mm -hmm. you know. Don't disappoint me, Sybil. Don't disappoint me. <laughs> You're such a disappointment, Sybil. Oh my god. Uh, did they mention her being pregnant? No. 
Now she does the whole the little baby thing when she's thing. getting into the. But now she didn't she yeah, already yeah. have her baby prior to this? Because oh, did she already have the baby? Well, that's what I was wondering the whole time was where's her kid because they were like she's pregnant, afar off, and we can't go see her, and there was the potential of a visit mentioned. Has she had that baby? I don't know. Oh, but if I've got to pay better attention. I didn't watch the last two episodes either, so we probably need to go back and look at the dates. Um, yeah, I'm bad with dates. Um, so before Martha Levinson arrives, mm -hmm. the dowager has a great line at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. I'm so looking forward to seeing your mother again. When I'm with her, I'm reminded of the virtues of English. And then Matthew <laughs> says, but isn't she American? She says, exactly. <laughs> so, <coughs> even though the Dowager hates Americans, I love her. Well, she's honest about it. Yeah, she is. So, Downton may be lost. Not may be lost. Um... What do you think about Matthew's little situation, getting his, the man who would have been his father-in-law, oh. um, left him his fortune, I guess. Truckload of the money. Truckload of the money. Um, and Matthew does not want it because he doesn't think it's right to take it because, you know, Reggie thinks that he was actually in love with Lavinia, which I guess... Matthew is admitting that he was never in love with Lavinia. Poor Lavinia. I wanted her to die, so... <laughs> she was sweet, though. But, okay, she was sweet. It was clear that he needed to end up with Mary, and then there was no way he was going to do that if she was alive, because he's an honorable man, so he would have stuck with her and been miserable for the rest of his life. When everybody knows, as they said in this episode, that as long as she walked the earth... Tom... Tom said that. It's the only intelligent See? thing in three seasons that that guy has said. That's I, the only thing. I kind of like him. I kind of like him. Now that Graham's got a hold of him, maybe his brain will sort of settle inside his skull. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's too, I think he's really going to ride that political thing a long way. Um, I totally forgot what I was just saying. <laughs> um... Oh, we haven't. There's one big thing that we haven't even talked about yet. Fate. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you want to save it? Do you want to finish the economic discussion? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, sure. Yeah. That's I was. What we're talking about. Well, I was sitting there after after he got the call and found out that he lost Cora's fortune. Mm -hmm. I immediately started clicking through dates in my head. We haven't even hit the Great Depression yet. Nope. So I'm um, I'm wondering. My first question is. Okay, so losing everything for this family, what exactly does that mean? Because Cora seemed to think it just meant a different house, not not being reduced to living downstairs, losing everything. Yeah, I think losing everything is a little bit different to them than it would be to most people. They're not going to be, you know, living in town. In she's not going process. to be Mrs. Branson. She's no. She's still going to be the countess. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, right before this episode of Downton Abbey was mm -hmm. The Secrets of Highclere Castle. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't watch that. Which was one What? I was <gasps> watching Once Upon a Time. Oh, that's terrible. Do you watch Once Upon a Time? No. Mm -hmm. Because Sunday night is PBS night, sorry. Mm -hmm. so, but, so The Secrets of Highclere Castle, we mm -hmm. learned where the current modern-day um, Earl and mm -hmm. Countess how they manage the estate, how they survive, how they keep it going. Mm -hmm. And so... They run tours through it. I'm si well, among other things. They I do watch it. They do lots of things. You have to see it. You have to go watch it. But, so then I'm sitting there thinking to myself, what is it that this family is not thinking of that they can be doing to keep the estate going? So, so I was just wondering. They don't have to have a fancy dinner every night? Dress for dinner every White night? White tie. Oh, Black tie looks like a waiter. Yeah. Poor guy. What was it he said? I feel like a Chicago uh, bootlegger. Uh, bootlegger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what 
Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. Matthew's too prideful to use the money that he's going to have. Mm -hmm. And so Mary says, you know, you're not on our side. You're not really with us. And then you don't know if they're going to get married or not. And I thought that was a sweet little exchange there. When, when, Tom, when Tom brought Matthew in and then, you know, and they're at the door. And, she and if you haven't peaks. seen it, just go watch it. Of course she peeks, wouldn't you have peeked? And then she ruins her marriage forever. She does it. Because she peeked? There was a picture on Twitter. I think I retweeted it. <laughs> <coughs> it was funny. Wouldn't you have peeked? Of course he didn't peek. I'm, I'm not surprised that he didn't peek. He's a really honorable guy. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in superstitions. Yeah. Traditions are one thing, superstitions are another. Mm. They're, they're not seeing the bride before the wedding seem to really extend maybe like a full yes. 24 hours before. It's a long time. Mm -hmm. They really hurried him out of the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, okay, so we don't know what's going to happen with the money. The next mm -hmm. episode looked like it was going to be a lot of maybe looking at another house. Didn't that, is that what it looked like to you? Mm hmm I kind of wonder. Well, I mean, Matthew and Mary are going to look at other houses. Oh, mm, yes. But now Cora and Lord Grantham. They have to find them too. They won't do it. It's called Down Abbey. They're not going to leave. They better not. I'm sure they're going to think of something. Oh. Maybe they'll find oil on the estate. <laughs> Dallas. Ooh, that in comes England. back in a few weeks. I'm so excited. I love that show. Do you watch that one? I don't have cable. PBS is my cable. PBS is Pill Man Cable. That's what I call it. <laughs> um, okay. I told um, you you'd be sorry you did this live. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of liking it. If you're watching this right now, could you tweet us? <laughs> because if there's nobody watching, I may never do this again. Why? Because it makes me nervous. Jennifer can tell you that right beforehand. That was just me. <laughs> oh. I think I just cut myself. Um. So, Bates, are we gonna are we gonna talk about that? Let. Okay, what do you think? Do you still think he's innocent? That was slightly freaky. Mm -hmm. Slightly freaky. I think we see that he has it in him to be. Um, I don't. I don't want to say he's like a bad man, but like whatever kind of man his surroundings demand of him. You think so? I don't know. I mean, it takes a lot for you to be able to strangle a person. Anybody who knows anything about murderers can tell you that. Like, it, ta it takes, like, some serious, you know, you really gumption. Yeah, and yeah, because strangling is, like, a really personal type crime. I mean, you can shoot somebody, you can stab somebody, or whatever, but strangling, you, like, you're, you're looking at them unless you're behind them. I watch a lot of, um, I used to watch a lot of, where is that show? Um, like Wicked Attraction, stuff like that, you know, you don't have cable, but, uh, the ID channel, or whatever it is, Discovery ID, it's just basically should be called How to Murder Somebody, plays Dateline all the time, stuff like that, so, um, anyway, yeah, he's kind of scary, a little bit, and I think Anna may be on a fool's errand, trying to find somebody who's going to say that they knew it. Beer, I was going to kill herself. Well, we know for sure that she was evil. Yeah. We have no doubts about that. Yeah. So, is he just the kind of guy that gets pushed over the edge? Is he just really frustrated with the situation? But I thought he was the kind of guy that could, especially with the love of a good woman, he could kind of sit back and write it out. And... I don't know. I do not know what's going to happen there. I was also wondering, does Lord Grantham ever write to Bates? I mean, he has to put up with Thomas on a daily basis, and he no longer has Bates to talk to. I don't know. He's really distracted. Is yeah. that socially acceptable for him to do? 
I think he probably went as far as he could go as uh, when he was, you know, going into court for him. Um, yeah, you're right. It's probably more about whether or not it's socially acceptable for him to be there. Doing that. So how far away is the prison where he's staying? Like, how often did he go there? And... She's more independently wealthy now. Oh, that's right, because she's renting out that house, right? Because mm -hmm. he put it in her name. Smart guy. See, so he can't be all bad. But that really was very freaky. Yeah. He tried to strangle his, uh, if you ever watched it, he strangled his cellmate. Who's taking money from a guard, right? Yeah. Was he, yeah. He was threatening him. That guy looks like a shady character. So, um, we didn't really talk about the wedding. Oh, footnote. I thought the robe that Mary was wearing was her wedding dress, and I was very disappointed for a few minutes. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. <laughs> She's getting married in that. Oh, my gosh. But I thought her real wedding dress was really pretty. Nice long veil. Mm -hmm. It suited her frame well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very period. Yep. I don't think I would have fit in very well. Then. Why? I don't wear things like a hanger. I mean, look at those girls. They look like they're a hanger. Their shoulders are a hanger, and the dress is just hanging on to them. It's true. Things were a little bit different back then. I know. They didn't have McDonald's. They didn't do low carb. Yeah, but they're sitting there and they can eat all what if they want all day long. But of course, you know, you probably have your grandmother to tell you to stop. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I'm really, I'm sorry, I'm stuck on that thing if, if Sybil is pregnant or not. Mm. I mean, because I thought she was, but, mm -hmm. but it doesn't look like much time has passed. I don't know. I don't know either. Oh, Daisy's attitude. Oh my gosh. She was it's really... Again, with the whole, did season two ever happen? I was just... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thomas. Anything you say, I'm going to do it. That sounds like a plan. And I love Daisy. Mm -hmm. I think she um, kind of came around toward the end. Um, that's funny. Um, when we have another big thing that we found out. Mrs. Hughes. Mrs. Hughes. Ooh, another storyline. Mrs. Hughes is sick. And I guess Miss Patmore is the only one who knows. Mm -hmm. They're implying that it may be breast cancer. And that was probably really bad. For the time. So, I mean, clearly it still is, but I mean, back then, it had to have been just... She seems really reconciled to the fact that she may die. I don't know about reconciled. Well, I mean, she's just really... That's what she says, you know, she's not going to tell... She needs to tell Carson. Yeah. So, so I, you know, I, I kind of... Though I'm with her on not telling him kind of thing. Because... Because... <clears throat> It's not, it's not that he's the boss, but he's a man, and you really don't want to, in a professional capacity, you really don't want to give any sort of avenues. She doesn't need preferential treatment. She doesn't need... But she does, because she needs to rest. She need, The doctor told her she needed to get off of her feet and rest as much as she could. That's not gonna... No, it's because he just told her that she needs to pull her weight, and he would not <laughs> be saying that if he knew that she was sick. And... and she just needs to lay down. <laughs> That's not going to happen. And uh, it wouldn't help either. Yeah. She could be pregnant and she would be laying down. That'd be a different story. Um, These women, they, they had to work to eat. They had to work 23 out of 24 hours to eat. That's why you did that to get married, Jennifer. Oh my goodness. But I think she loves him. I'm excited for their <laughs> wedding. I'm more excited for that than I was this one. Because it just kind of got downplayed. I don't know. It was yeah. like, I have this terrible feeling that we're going to see more of you sweating than we did. I think we will, too. And I, I think, think it may be terrible. terrible. Is it much throwing us together? 
We didn't get to see the south of France, for Pete's sake. We didn't get to go on the honeymoon. Oh, okay. Then. Speaking of the south of France and the honeymoon, we were talking about there were several blush-worthy moments. Uh. <clears throat> did you list them? No, I did <laughs> not list them. I did not. I didn't list them either. My grandmother made me watch it. But the, the Earl and Matthew, the Earl and the future Earl, so how's the honeymoon? That kind of made me uncomfortable. Yeah, slightly. <laughs> yeah. Because what dad actually asked him. But he's, the Earl's, in the Earl's defense, he's been working for a very long time to get Mary married off. Very long time. Like, since she was born. Yeah. And there this have been is a, some... This is a huge success for them. Yes. Mm -hmm. There have been some moments we weren't sure that was ever going to happen. So. I'm pretty sure my family felt the same way about Mary. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I didn't take very good notes on the second one. The second one. Like zero. Well, but you, you already addressed Mrs. Hughes. I know, I just remembered that because I just watched it before you got here. Well, Tom um, drops completely off the radar. In the well, episode. they left, right? But we didn't get to see him leave. Nobody mm -hmm. said goodbye to nobody. It was just, that's it. It was over. Yeah. on. O'Brien has new bangs. New. Okay. I love O'Brien's bangs. Jennifer texted me the other day and said that we're going to have to do an episode with bangs, but I'm trying to grow mine out, so I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Well, we can always put fake bangs on it. I mean, I, I've seen fake bangs. Well, exactly. I don't know if that's that. I love um, O'Brien's bangs, the Twitter account. And yeah. So, it cracks me up. So I thought we needed to do some sort of a, a picture shows and petticoats response to that. We'll see. What kind of bangs would you choose for yourself? I bet you had some rockin' bangs in the 80s. Didn't you? <laughs> no. no? I have some terrible pictures, but... <laughs> my mom tried to feather my bangs whenever I was a kid. <laughs> you know, teased them really high and had like, oh, it was bad. It was really, really bad. So most of the time I had... Um, just straight ones across the front. Not blunt bangs. I can't pull off the blunt bang. <laughs> it couldn't be seen in public in the 80s without having puppy bangs. No, because you looked like a freak. And then, what was it, like, some point in the 90s? What is that odd sound? You hear that? You don't live in my house, so you wouldn't know what an odd sound is, I guess. Sorry. Um, yeah. I'm looking at your notes now. <laughs> That's the last page. Mm. Did you have any other good one-liners? There were some, but I forgot to write them all down. I will, Martha Levinson makes me love the Dowager more than I have heard it. If you have to pay money, better to a doctor than an undertaker. Oh, that is true. I don't know, unless it's just, you know, delaying the inevitable. It's inevitable for all of us. <sighs> yep. And that is what she said at the end of the last episode. This is Hughes. It just, someday they're all going to die. And maybe her day will come before the rest of them. But Yeah, so, um, overall, underwhelming. Yeah, a little bit. I think. Yeah. Still looking forward to the next episode, though. Always. But. Mm -hmm. Oh, and apparently I missed the uh, Call the Midwife Christmas special. Because my cable, like, the listing on the guy listed yes. it as TBA. So I'm like, because uh, it will record if it says that it's Masterpiece, that it said TBA, and so it didn't record, and then they didn't replay it. Yes. At least I couldn't find that they replayed it. So right. apologies to OET OK if you replayed it. I don't think, I think um, Oak Cliff that night, there was uh, a Doctor Who marathon the next day. Yes, that's what it was. I think that's what it was, and which was great. We loved right, it. I'm not that far ahead, so I can't get into it. I mean, like, I'm still on, I don't remember which one it was. 1950s? No. Oh, no, I didn't start that far back. No. No. I will go back and get those, but I have to catch up to the present right now. 
I've seen the one with the, um, never mind, we'll talk about this later. Doctor Who counts. That could count for this show, right? Period drama. Yeah. Future period drama. <laughs> Sometimes they go into the past, too. <laughs> <coughs> That's true. Okay, so, um, Jennifer and I are going to go eat Mexican food now. And that's what's been getting me through this. So I'm probably hungry. I had too much caffeine this morning and then no food. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. You didn't have breakfast. Mm -hmm. You didn't need me to come fix your omelet. Mm -mm. I'm all right. I'm fine. It's important to start your day off right. I had two cups of coffee with cream in them. Especially if you've got someone who's germ ridden coming to your house. I drank my uh, or took my my elderberry syrup that I made. I'm good. Um, so, coming up in future weeks, we have Edith's wedding to look forward to. Yes. We have Will Bates Ever Get Free coming up to look forward to. I'm worried. The possible future sale of Downton Abbey mm -hmm. to look forward to. Which is not very cheery. It's not, but it's the season opener. It's not supposed to be. Okay. There is something cheery. Edith's wedding? No, other than that. No. That is cheery, though. I'm very excited. Yes. I really do love her hair. Really, really. Do. It's, it's a flattering cut for her. It's very nice. She just looked better. She was happier. Yeah. I think so. Happiness makes you look nicer. It's prettier. It's true. Um... No, the thing, the exciting thing is what we are planning to do, and, you know, what I suggested to you the other day. No? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we have thematic episodes of picture shows and petticoats to look forward to. Yay! And so we bargained, and we're going to do one with hats. Yay! Even though I look terrible in a hat. Not true. I'm going to have to either have something really teeny tiny over here, mm -hmm. or an enormous hat. I like the enormous idea. You think so? Let's go Kentucky Derby enormous. <gasps> Ooh, I like it. You can handle that. Like, like, to the point where, pick the hat that you would wear when we get to meet the group. Okay. I can get behind that. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, so, um, Nessie might sound way less classy than yours. <laughs> we don't have to be all classy. We're going to have a pajama episode. I'm going to have Feather Boa on mine. If I let her in the house with it, because feathers and glitter are the two things that are not allowed in my house. And I think the Christmas card you gave me may have had glitter on it. It did. It did. Um, and the year before that, and the year before that, and the year before that. Jolene sent me one with glitter, too. And I love all you people, and I appreciate your glittery cards. <laughs> but it makes me itch, and, like, I get... So maybe Kevin should have the job of opening your Christmas cards for you, putting them on your shelf. Or maybe I just need a, a personal secretary. There you go. Mm -hmm. You can see if Martha's maid is available. I don't want Martha's maid. I like the sound of a dowager's maid, Smithers, being ah. like all ladies' maid. She lives for intrigue. <laughs> How have we never met Smithers? I don't know. Before? We haven't met Smithers. We want to meet Smithers. Oh, please. I do. I like the sound of her. I love it. And I want to see her and O'Brien go into it. Oh, I bet they would, too. Where does the Dowager live? In town. She has a house like Isabel has. Did we see her house? I don't think we've... Well, we might have been inside it for tea or something. Oh, I think you're right. But I don't think we've done the next exterior shot. Okay. I could be wrong. Hmm. Okay. I think we can call this good. So, did anybody tweet us to tell us that they were watching this? Oh, let's out. find out. Yeah. Live on the air. I don't see anything. That's all right. Everybody else in America has to work today. That is true. I'm not we, today. We're, uh, well, I don't want to like the leisure. I'm not even going to keep them. People think that. Someone actually said something like that to me recently. Hope you're enjoying your day. 
I mean, but it was meant in a different kind of way than what you have to Today, where you don't get to do it, you don't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's a little different. Hey, somebody just tweeted us, I think. Um, anyway. Um, so, I think we're going to call it good. Okay. All right. We will see you all again another time. Yep, next week, same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> it's Batman. It's Batman. Oh. oh my gosh. I'm a little bit older than she is. I mean, I'm not that old, but I'm a little bit older than she is. I still like Batman. He's my favorite superhero because he's not an alien like Superman, and he was not bitten by a radioactive spider like Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. It's just a dude. Just a dude. Mm -hmm. With a cape. <laughs> and a mask. He's like the Phantom <laughs> of the Opera of superheroes. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.